food system in Hanoi is changing, and with it, people's habits. At the open or wet markets, food safety is a real issue, but people still shop there. And the government regularly closes down these wet markets, and as a replacement, supermarkets with Western blueprints are imposed. So this is the dichotomy, the two sides of Hanoi's food system. On the one hand, you have the wet markets with their food safety issues, and on the other hand, there are the Western-style supermarkets that do not correspond to the habits and practices of the Vietnamese consumers. In this video, I will explain that the potential for co-creation lies in bringing the best of these two sides together. I will show why specifically local agro-food firms potentially have a big role to play in overcoming this dichotomy and what this means for the co-creation process. The dichotomy in the food system leads to the emergence of a new group of local agro-food firms. And this group consists of local food suppliers, small organic shops, farm-to-fork businesses, organizers of food markets, and so forth. This group of local agro-food firms originated from concerns with the traditional food system. With their production and business model, they aim to overcome issues such as food safety, sustainability, ethical production, or others. It is these local agro-food firms that could help co-creating a food system that actually fits the context of Hanoi and is resilient for the future. Not only because they are local and know the local food habits and practices, but also because they are small and can innovate quickly, in short cycles and in close contact with their users, responding to the changing environment. However, they also struggle to find their place within the uh, Vietnamese food system. So, how can these firms overcome uh, the hurdles and fulfill their potential in the Vietnamese food system? How do these local agro-food firms operate and what exactly do they struggle with? Let's try to understand how specifically co-design can help them to gain, uh, to gain a stronger position in Hanoi. Local agro-food firms are secretive, secretive towards possible competitors. Many of them are afraid of being copied by others because it is not uncommon that their own originating idea, a specific way of farming, a product, a service, has been copied from someone else before. And because of this fear of being copied, innovation processes are often closed off to others. This closeness hinders radical innovation and co-design can help open up these processes. And because the agro-food firms are very open towards customers, they are ideal participants for them to involve in co-design sessions. So co-design is a form of co-creation that provides a structured way of personal, direct and face-to-face -face interaction with consumers. And the premise of this type of interaction is that it can enhance the relationship between the eager firms on the one side and the willing customers on the other side. At the same time, it can stimulate the development, acceptance and spread of sustainable food products. So, what is needed for those small and local agro-food firms to tap into the potential of co-design? Three things need to be defined in order to start a successful co-design process. The focus, the scope and the stage of development. So first, it is important to establish the focus of the co-design session. This focus can be tangible or intangible and either product or non-product oriented. It is important that co-design is based on a problem and it is, uh, that it is perceived as a problem by the problem owner, in this case the agro-food firms. The local agro-food firms have a strong focus on the agricultural part normally and they often do not have formal product or service design skills as larger international super, uh, supermarkets or companies would have. And many of the small firms believe that branding or more attractive packaging can make them more successful. So these are possibly topics to discuss in co-design settings with the customers. Uh, second, co-design is about designing something new or innovating together. However, to be able to design something new, it is important to set the scope of what you're going to design and with whom. And this determines the level of innovation. When the scope is too wide, it might be hard for people to come up with ideas because everything is possible. When the scope is too narrow, it might only result in improvements and redesigns of the existing product. The Vietnamese agro-food firms often have little experiences with innovation 
and most of the time they started small and along the way they improved and redesigned their business or product step by step. Co-design then with uh, customers could open up the innovation processes and to go beyond this focus of improvements and actually realize radical innovation instead, possibly. Last, third, it is important to make clear in which stage of development people are going to be co-designing. Co-designing and involving other people can take place in each stage, but it has different forms in each stage. In ideation, conceptualization, testing or product launch. And so far, the Vietnamese local agro-food firms only sporadically involve their customers, and if so, mostly in the testing phase or when the product is already finished and ready to go to the market. A structured way of co-design could help them in involving customers earlier in the development process, and also because the earlier you involve people, the more influence they can have on the outcome. Okay, to sum up, the enthusiasm and characteristics of the agro-food firms for co-design with customers is promising, but the lack of skills and experiences with innovation a challenge to overcome. But if this challenge can be overcome, co-design could help product and service innovation for these local agro-food firms, and this could strengthen their position and provide a realistic alternative to the wet markets and on the other hand, supermarkets in Hanoi.